So let's imagine that it is in fact possible for you to run faster than the speed of light, and in so doing, travel back in time. It still would be wildly irresponsible. I knew you were going to say this. Yes, because Barry, if you were to go into the past, any interaction you had with your parents or yourself, you step on the wrong blade of grass, you have no idea what the consequences to that could be. No, I know. The, the butterfly effect, right? Yes. I get it. But Bruce, I can fix things. You could also destroy everything. I could save her. I could save both of them. I could save your parents. Mary, these scars we have make us who we are. We're not meant to go back and fix them. And there's nothing broken with you that needs to be fixed. Take it from an old guy who's made a lot of mistakes. Do not live your past. Live your life. Don't let your tragedy define you. Hey, panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I am Robert. And this episode, we are doing a spoilerful podcast about The Flash 2023 that came out on June 16th, 2023. Now it's July 1st as we're covering this. So the moves, movie's been out for more than a month and a half. So it's had its time. We gave it a month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, more than a month, and uh, it hasn't been doing that well in comparison. So, uh, Rob, well, let, let's go into what we're covering, which is the Flash twenty twenty three, and I'll just go right into the synopsis. All right, uh, that that then we'll go into the more details of what's happened since its opening and on June sure. sixteenth. So, the synopsis for this particular movie. Barry Allen uses his superpower, uh, super speed to change the past, and his attempt to save his family creates a world without superheroes, forcing him to race for his life in order to save the future. Very short, very sweet, very similar to what we got with uh, the Flash TV series that's been right. around and just ended recently, too, as well on the CW, which Did I it end, Did that end already? That already ended. They already, that already they ended. ended that series uh, complete. So Grant Gustin is retired as the Flash officially. I uh, unfortunately gave up on that series a while back ago. Yeah, a lot of people did, and I I don't blame them. Me, I was more enamored within the first four seasons, and then towards the that was it. Yeah, and then after yeah. that, it it kind of got comedic. It got a little bit to the point of a little exaggerated with certain story parts. But nonetheless, we're talking about The Flash 2023 right. right now, the movie with Ezra Miller and Michael Keaton, of all people. Michael and Keaton, <laughs> uh, Sasha Kaye, which uh, I think I think she did a good job as Supergirl. I believe she did as well. Uh, you know, and then we have Ben Affleck in it as well. And uh, a few other people who came in. As right. cameos, Michael Shane, uh, Michael, Michael Shannon, Shannon is in it as well. Return of Zod from Man of Steel. So uh, this is uh, director Andy Machete's movie, but over the course of what has it been like three years? It's been in developmental hell. It was delayed for a year before it actually came out. Now we finally got it. And Rob, what are what did it rake in as far as so far? So it's been out since June 16th. What did it make per money at this point? Uh, so overall right now, and we're talking about uh, domestic and uh, overseas, it only has made $218.9 million out of a 200 to $220 million budget. So this movie basically has bombed and, I mean, Big time. It failed, which yeah. is really, really sad. And the one thing that I laugh about it is it was very much the most anticipated 
and the least anticipated movie for a super film, a uh, superhero right. film for its time because of the issues that were going on based upon Ezra Miller, uh, all the uh, issues with him personally in his own life and regarding his representation of the flash over the year of the years that it was being promoted. Yeah. You know, they had, uh, I, I forget what it was called. DC had their own convention that was during the pandemic. And this was one of the movies they were promoting. This was the whole, right. This was the whole thing where like, because of, you know, the whole pandemic thing and things that were supposed to happen uh, live, they decided to do, you know, television versions of it, like everything else during the pandemic, which is screw it. Let's just, you know, put it on TV because everybody's stuck at the house. Yeah. Um, And it's the place where they announced that they announced, uh, what was it? A uh, black Adam where you know, the, uh, Dwayne Johnson yeah. all of a sudden said that the, uh, the hierarchy of power was going to change. Yeah. It <laughs> and changed all right. It did big time. <laughs> In the opposite big time. way. <laughs> it changed for everything that has come out after that already. <laughs> so, um, but DC fandom try to push it. They try to do things online through like, uh, with San Diego Comic-Con, New York Comic-Con at the time, we're trying to do virtual events and trying to promote these movies. And a lot of the movies, at, at, look look what happened with Black Widow when I came out, that went direct to streaming as well in the theaters, but it resulted in a whole you know lawsuit with uh, Scarlett Johansson and Disney right. regarding that because she was expecting to make money at the box office and they put it directly. They just like literally lied to her and said well it's going to come out in the theaters now mind you at the time the the theaters were closed to some degree and there wouldn't have been as much money anyway honestly right but they should have delayed it with this they delayed it a full year and there were so many things that we were looking forward to it had been a while since Ezra Miller had gotten into any heated trouble during that time. Right. It's just everything that was lingering on and they thought people would forget. Now, my opinions about the movie would be a little bit different based upon I just look at the movie and not at the actor at this point. But there are things that you have to look at when it comes to the actor itself. Uh, there's some things that I, I found out, too, regarding the end filming results of the like the end scene. Oh, filming. really? Okay. Yeah. That uh, was very interesting to me when I heard about it through uh, another podcaster online. And mm. I thought it was pretty cool when I heard that. But with this, uh, if you look at uh, Rotten Tomatoes and you go to the t- Tomatometer, it, it gets 64% for uh, critical reviews for uh, actual film critics Whereas with the audience score gets an 84, right? But yet it still has not redeemed any money because, you know, those are people that are just pushing in numbers and reviewing it online. Now the, the movie itself is going to be a financial bomb and it's going to be one of the biggest bombs that they've ever had in DC yeah. at this point when it comes to a live action superhero film. And I could understand that. I, I still have high hopes for Blue Beetle, but we don't know. <laughs> it, we, yeah, they might pull the brakes and say, "All right, uh, well, pump the brakes a little bit, let's go," and then we're going to put it direct to streaming, and then might go on its way to HBO Max for all we know. But we won't know until that time comes. With this, uh, there were high hopes, and I had high hopes for it for the fact that as I was looking at the trailers and once we started seeing a little bit more, who was more involved. The more trailers we got, the more information we got, and it looked great. The issue, an overshouting issue, is Ezra Miller himself. Right. Now, as we talk about this, we're going to talk about what we liked about the movie and what we didn't like about the movie, what worked, what didn't work, and then things that how they changed within the film itself. So initial thoughts, we'll go right into our overall initial thoughts. So, Rob. What are your initial thoughts of the movie overall? Yeah, my initial over uh, thoughts, are, you know, on this movie, the anticipation of it at first, I was like, well, I'm not really looking forward to this. And then, of course, as time went by 
and you heard people, you know, people who have seen early screenings of it, there was, and, you know, and test screenings, everybody was praising it. And I was thinking, all right, so I guess this movie is going to turn out to be great. So by the time I got into the theaters and I saw it, I generally liked it. I'm going to say that, be very honest with you. I did like the movie. I did like some of the humor. And I was able to put aside Ezra Miller's problems and just look at his performance Mm -hmm. in this movie. And I did enjoy it. Did I have problems with certain parts? Sure. Uh, Just like any movie you would. But Mm -hmm. overall, I did like the movie. It's not a perfect uh, Flashpoint movie, just like in the comic books, because this Mm -hmm. is based off of, you know, Flashpoint. But that being said, yeah, I mean, I did like the movie. It's it just sucks that this is a movie that came out now, and it should have, like you said, it should have come out a year ago. Yeah, but because of the whole Ezra Miller thing and all the problems that Warner Brothers had, and being bought by Dis- you know, Discovery, and changing, of course, you know, leadership and who's going to do DC and all this stuff, things just this movie got way too delayed. And and it just kind of gave us a, well, it's a good movie, but why do I care? Because this universe is <laughs> not coming back. You know, it, DC it already is not... changed hands because w- by the time this movie came out, we just got hit over the, the back of right. the head saying James Gunn's going to change this world. Correct. And this is a leftover from the Snyder universe. Which kind of sucks because I like the Snyder. I really, really like the Snyder universe. It's just what I don't like is the fact that they they didn't let, uh, I think, Zack Snyder really control this entire universe the way he should have. Because filmmakers went ahead and did their own things with other you know properties from this, which didn't make it all like cohesive or something. But yeah, it just... It's it sucks that this is a universe as Zack Snyder did that we're not going to see. And and of course, because of the whole Henry Cavill thing, you know, I keep saying, what the hell did he do? Because for a person who everybody wants to see as Superman, I heard that there was a cameo also with Henry Cavill in this movie, but they cut it out. They left, you know, other people in here, Mm -hmm. but not him. So. It's a shame that this, you know, this entire property is in such a mess and we'll just have to see how James Gunn fix it. But overall, I did like the movie. It wasn't a bad movie. I thought it was entertaining. Mm -hmm. I thought Michael Keaton, you know, which is not, believe it or not, everybody out there, you know, they say that's their favorite Batman. He is not my favorite Batman, but I thought he, (laughs) you know, he did pretty well on that. Yeah. Sasha Kaya, I think they're great as Supergirl. Yes, he did. Uh, you know, and honestly, you know, Ezra Miller being a he's a good actor. He's just, you know, a uh, not the nicest person. And he's a, has all these legal problems that we'll talk about. But yeah. Yeah, uh, it's it, it's a, it's such a shame. Yeah. Uh, my thoughts were, well, I was anticipating this movie for a long time. And then once all the Ezra Miller stuff came out, because I knew it was a production at that time. During the pandemic and everything that was going on, we hear all these things about Ezra Miller and him getting into trouble, what he has done. And a lot of that was starting to make me feel, do I really want to go see this movie? Do I really want to go see this movie? No. And then I started seeing the trailers. Now they were starting to do promotion. We could actually get to see what's going on. Well, the first two were okay. Then I saw MR. Then I saw Keaton. Then I saw a little bit of Batfleck. And then I started seeing a little bit more that intrigued me going, wow, this looks like a very entertaining movie. So I sucked it up and said, fine, I'm going to go see this movie because honestly, I'm I'm a superhero fan. That's the whole point of this particular podcast is that we are into movies that were adapted from comics. Flashpoint is such a huge pivotal point in the DC uh, comics universe, and we had to cover it. And we did cover it to some degree when we saw Infinite Crisis on the CW with uh, the Flash and the Arrowverse with uh, Grant Gustin. Right. And uh, it, they did it pretty okay for what budgeted that they had then. Uh, in this case, uh, I overall, when I got to go see it, I was like, okay, this is the Flash in the very beginning. Okay. 
wow, I just got Batman Returns again with Michael Keaton. Now, mind you, that was the first Batman that we ever got in uh, cinematic history as far as like in cinema. Uh, well, right. Aside from the <laughs> the little uh, serials that they used to do in the 40s, <laughs> but nobody remembers those. But the fact is that we got Michael Keaton back as Batman. So right. the at the very end of the movie, I'm like, wow, that was one of the best Batman movies I saw that featured the Flash. Awesome. <laughs> and literally, that's what it's centered around. They were centering it around that a little bit more about with Supergirl and Cash's uh, input as Supergirl herself. And I thought, okay, they gave us a hint about that. But wow, overall entertaining of a story. Uh, some of the visual effects kind of took me out of it, but I have to sway on a different side from Mr. Kevin Smith when he mentioned it and you talked about it recently on his podcast saying, goes, ah, I, it, they gave like nods to everybody else with the cameos. But to me, he goes, ah, I, I knew where they were coming from, but my honest opinion, honestly, you had over a year. You could have invested more that could have saved the movie a little bit in my opinion well a little bit i mean more. we'll keep we'll keep talking keep we'll keep going talking yeah. about that yeah but to me it's like uh, there were i only had a little bit but i did admire the gumption for it of actually putting it out there and what we got you know it did look a little bit rudimentary when it come, came with the cg invest a little bit more that's all i ask for the fact that we waited this long for this particular movie. Now, mind you, it might have been had to deal with all the legal issues that they've had with Ezra. Right. And that's the reason why they had to hold back on it. And it probably went over budget as well. So I, I really did enjoy this movie. What shocked me was Ezra Miller's acting in it. And I really did enjoy his acting. I could have put aside all the stuff that he had done in his personal life that was exploited in media that we all know that are horrific to a lot of people. But overall, w looking at it from a different view and just looking at the movie as a whole, he did well when it came to the character representation on both versions of Barry Allen and what he would did. And I thought it right. was done well as far as overall great story there are little issues when it comes to the actual comic to the film mm -hmm. but nothing's ever 100 perf uh you know perfect in my opinion you know it, it was like like i said i agree with you rob it was very entertaining i had a few minor points but that's about it and like i said best batman returns movie that we've had that featured the flash <laughs> <laughs> okay so a few things so while i like you know again i like the flash you thought that the Flash, him, the way he portrayed the Flash was good. I thought, because I don't have anything invested in the Flash. Like, the Flash was never a comic book that I read. Okay. Recently, I have, you know, here and there, mm -hmm. uh, but not one that, like, I mean, and I started collecting comic books again. So, of course, I collect, you know, definitely Batman. I'm big in collecting. And, but the Flash, still don't collect it. So, I don't have what other fans of that character have which is a lot of knowledge of his world how you know how his personality is supposed to be all these things and from what i've heard is that there's a lot of people out there that don't like his portrayal of barry allen because it has it's nothing like the comic book version of that he's very that goofy and right this that particular being said, version yeah that being said yeah because they said that Barry Allen is not goofy in the comic books. He is lighthearted, but not goofy. The one who's goofy is um, uh, Kid Flash, who is, uh, I yes. forgot the name of Wally uh, West. Wally West is a lot more goofy. Correct. So, they kind of made an amalgam of those two characters into this version of Barry Allen at this point. Correct. So for me, you know, again, I don't have that much investment in the, in the actual character, but I thought he was good. You know, I thought in that, you know, for me, he was fine. Yeah. Batman to me is different because to me, I, like, you know, the more I read 
the books, the more I go into the lore and stuff like that, mm -hmm. uh, to me, it's important to have somebody that can actually portray that. And I think Ben Affleck, who is also in this movie. Oh, yeah. My favorite Batman. Portrays, portrays that very well. Like, I always tell people, it's like, you might like Keaton, but Batman is the closest we'll, we have ever gotten to the comic book version oh, Batman. of Batman. Yeah. Batman. Yeah, so that's I why I liked it. And, and you know what? A lot of people like him because at first, you know, everybody was like, you know, it was like Ben Affleck. Oh, I hate Ben Affleck and all this stuff. And people then all of a sudden <laughs> like, loved him. Same thing with, you know, Henry Cavill and stuff. But yeah, that was that was my biggest. That was the biggest thing that I saw is like people. Well, I mean, there was a lot of criticisms because. Of of it's funny how you say that, you know, it has an 80 what 86 percent. On Rotten Tomatoes or something? On Rotten audience Tomatoes, score? 84% for the 84 audience score. Right. So it's 84% audience score for the people who have seen it. Mm -hmm. But the, uh, and I think, you know, you and I were talking about this. They, they did some kind of poll or survey in theaters when this movie came out. And they were doing it for people who were coming out of other movies, not out of The Flash. Yeah. And they asked them, you know, hey, would you see the Flash or, you know, uh, do you know about the Flash or are you going to see the Flash or why haven't you seen the Flash? And the biggest thing has been Ezra Miller, because Ezra Miller's in it. They do not want to support this movie. Yeah. Um, which is something that I don't know why Warner Brothers didn't and kind of think about that. Uh, well, there there was talks, and I think I mentioned this a long time ago. It's like if they literally eliminated Ezra Miller out of that and CG'd in Grant Gustin, it would be a completely different movie together altogether. Uh, it, it, just him overdubbing his voice and right. doing everything and not acting like Ezra a little bit, but at least doing the CGI visual, like the uh, AI stuff that's out there. It they didn't have to be. Yeah, it didn't have to be Grant Gus. I mean, I think what they I think what they should have done. And again, uh, this is just me. I think what they should have done is say, hey, the first 25 minutes of this movie will have Ezra Miller. But when he goes back in, you know, back to uh, in time mm -hmm. to meet himself, that version of the Flash does not look like Ezra Miller. Yeah. Because, and then somehow. Yeah kill off Ezra Miller and just continue with the person, you know, the new flash or, you yeah, know, that would whatever. be rewriting of the yeah. whole flash point. And but because yeah. let's be honest, you know, Ezra Miller, uh, I don't think, I mean, he's a fucking idiot for doing everything that he did, but I don't yeah. think he's that much of an idiot to say, Hey, with all the troubles I have, you know, I have, I don't think they're going to hire me for anything from this point on oh his his career is tarnished with his past events at this yeah, point it's completely over at, so if warner as brothers well as with this particular movie yeah. and how so if it warner brothers would have gone to him and says listen man your career basically is over because of all the bull you know bull that you have pulled mm -hmm. this is what we're gonna with this is what we're gonna do we're gonna rewrite this and we're gonna replace you in the flash you're still gonna you still have your money mm. but we're just gonna replace you and they could you know, have really re redid the movie at a certain point a year ago if they needed to. And well, that's guess what? what? I said. This movie has been redone. Well, this movie has been re edited, or there was like 12 different versions of this movie. Correct. Something yes. like that. Something yeah. crazy. Yeah. And when they filmed it, it has been edited, I think, like four or five times to have a completely, you know, different feel to it. This movie's a mess. <laughs> it's it's a mess but i i look at it at, at this it's a fun mess that honestly uh, i'm not one to say all right i'm gonna buy that bad movie on a steelbook blu-ray 4k unfortunately I, would actually, I know i will but <laughs> i will i will myself and it's not something i would say that i would actually watch it again because right mainly for the nostalgia purposes of what we saw like i said that i had a little bit of issues with the uh the cg Right. But without that stuff, I that's what really gave me the feels. Uh we got Batfleck, which is amazing because he's my number one favorite Batman. That's oh, out mine there. too, man. I mean, I've yeah, we, we got him and he was a bit comedic in the very beginning too, because of the last little truth. Uh just to throw in uh one of my favorite scenes. Uh, uh you know, he, he goes, Oh, what am I doing you know, fighting crime all this time? I should really devote and 
send my money and give it to the orphanages and <laughs> instead of homeless. <laughs> Uh, it's like uh, it was a throwaway line, but it was so funny too for the fact that it's like he goes, "Oh well," yeah. He, he just talks about his ego and everything else too during that, which is amazing. But we get to see him cool in the blue and gray cowl w- during the daylight in- at that as well. Right, uh, that was something that we never even saw before. Him on a motorcycle too, which is very different. That motorcycle scene was so. This is why it upsets me. Like it <laughs> really upsets me the fact that they didn't let Ben Affleck do his standalone movie. Which that's what the you it's know not that's that the, they didn't want to. He left. He left because again because of the whole. You know, um, well, it was his mental was go- health at that well, point, right? But it was the whole stupidity of the the way the studio was handling the whole thing, which is they were getting involved so much, yeah, that they weren't letting him. I mean, look, Ben Affleck is, I think, a comic book fan too. So, oh, yeah, yeah. So they should have let him just kind of, and he's a great director. The guy has already won, you know, two Academy Awards. Mm-hmm. So they should have let him just kind of take the lead on this, but they didn't. They involved it so much, and they 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 wanted to change things so much. And I guess yeah, it did affect his health because of all the crap that he was going through. I mean, personally, of course, at the same time, that it didn't help. So when you see Ben Affleck as Batman, especially with that scene in the motorcycle. I was just thrilled to see that. I was like, first of all, the motorcycle was a badass motorcycle. I thought it oh, was yeah. way. I thought it was way better than the pod. Uh, the the um, Dark Knight one with the tumbler. The Dark Knight one, yeah. whatever, the Bat Pod or whatever they call it. Yeah. Even though that was an iconic scene, that that's a legendary iconic scene that you see with you know when that thing comes the out. From tumbler the, uh, from the tumbler pops off and explodes, and he comes out. But man, that that motorcycle was awesome, and the way he played it, and the action scene on that was just insane and i yeah. love that part of it i thought it was great they had gal gadot again you know <laughs> as wonder woman <laughs> you know there and um that was nice to see i would say because you're like oh damn it's the justice league it's you like know, and we all gotta you need say is, goodbye to it unfortunately yeah, all you need is two more people there you just need Jason Momoa, and then you just need Henry Cavill to just be in that scene also. Oh, and or in, Cyborg, uh, too. And, and Cyborg. Um, even though Cyborg... Okay, so here's my thing with Cyborg. The character of Cyborg was never an original no, he wasn't. Uh, member of the Justice League. No. I do not understand why they, they put that character They put, put that character in there. I just yeah, don't understand it. Yeah, it should have been Green it. Lantern in all... Uh, if respect. they're looking to do more of a diversity thing, then just have you know John Stewart be the Green Lantern or whatever it yeah. is, you know, and that's it. You sh- they should have done that, but yeah, they didn't be- have to get you know uh, Ryan Reynolds right. come but back, get, right? <laughs> but don't get me wrong. I mean, I think that, I mean you got three missing characters that you'll never see again, or you're not going to see any of these characters again. But nah. it was nice to at least see that part of it, and mm-hmm. I was like, oh, that just sucks. And then to know that Henry Cavill was in the movie. And then they took them out. It's just even more upsetting. All I could say is deleted scenes on a 4K yeah. Blu-ray. No, they won't, they won't even. I guarantee you, they won't even do that. Well, Again. I, I'm I'm promoting that, and all you listeners out there, <laughs> please advocate for that. For the fact that we need to see that information. You we know need how to much see the get visuals. I do don't you care. realize how much probably deleted scenes are for this movie since it I was don't like care. Re- I'll it watch was hours re- upon hours <laughs> it was redone like you know four times but i don't care I'll, i'll i keep watch asking it. man and if henry cavill ever ever listens to this podcast henry <laughs> the f- hell did you do <laughs> <laughs> what did you do to warner brothers man because man well you with henry cavill is it was that mustache it was that mustache it, it was, that he did well, <laughs> for Mission could, Impossible. <laughs> they could, well, they could blame uh, who? 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 Uh, what studio did Mission Impossible? I forgot. Because <laughs> you heard about the. Did you hear about I that know, whole maybe. thing? Did you hear about that whole thing about the mustache? So yeah, it wasn't the fact because he could have shaved it and then just put it on if he was going to do some other shoots, you know, yeah, a or fake one or whatever. What yeah. happened was that somehow the filmmakers didn't like each other and they were trying to screw each other oh god and that's the reason and it's like 
wow i mean the ego and freaking in hollywood it's just they're like they're like ch- little they're kids. like children's yeah so yeah so it kind of upsets me that you know i mean but yeah batman phenomenal just look great that was a great great scene yeah and uh, yeah it, it was great to see those uh those scenes and and get that like i said that was one of my favorite scenes was the intro scene of right. course, you know, I love how Barry is just saying that he's there to clean up Batman's mess because it was Falcone's Falcone Jr. <laughs> that was doing all this. And he goes, why am I here? Why am I? It's like, I'm at the south side. Nothing's going on here. Oh, crap. And then it yeah. does. And then it just like the building starts falling. And then it's like, you know, Alfred. Oh, my God. So, so what did you think of the baby scene? Because let me tell you, there's been so much uproar about Oh, that. a lot of people are upset. And I knew that when I was watching it, I'm like. He just put a baby in a microwave. Yep. Oh my God, there is a scalpel and syringe right near a baby. <laughs> my <laughs> jaw dropped when all I saw was those babies just go right out the window. And I was like, oh, yep. they're really doing this, aren't they? <laughs> but let me tell you, I love that scene. That is, I love the scene, scene too. I, I love that entire scene. I love the humor behind as, it, everything. It is. It, you have to love that scene. It's so outrageous. Who would actually do that? And yeah. then who would actually film that? So they had the gall to actually put that through. Right. And the fact that the microwave bings and he takes <laughs> the baby out, hands it to the lady after he just misses. Like, right. she just literally is like steps away from falling to like a big crevice. That's right there. That from like the building yeah. falling down. The and people that I hear, yeah, the screams. people that I hear that are upset, of course, are parents. Of course. Uh, you know, but I found it hilarious. But the one thing that other people compared it to, and mm-hmm. I have to agree with them, they said, you know, so they did that whole slow motion thing, mm-hmm. and here he is, he's doing little things. Okay, so if I do this, that should be able to deflect this here, deflect that there. And they're like, yeah, they're trying to follow Quicksilver mm-hmm. in the movie The X Men. Um, yeah, that was definitely from, uh, what was it? Days, uh, well, they did it in Days of Future Past. Days of Future Past. And the thing is that that movie, he, I, and I like Days of Future Past, but I that, love that movie really set the tone, the oh, bar yeah, for a speedster. And even though when you have people compare Quicksilver to, um, the Flash. to The Flash, The Flash is still the fastest character in any comic book property. Correct. But that scene just made him. Uh, Quicksilver scene like he was the fastest thing ever but it was just a beautifully done scene and it just seems like this movie was trying to copy the same thing that they, that was doing. they were they yeah. honestly were especially during the time because they had to like reflect it back it's like oh he's a he's a snack hole he still has to eat so even then he's putting Correct. something in the microwave cooking it like a chimichanga or something <laughs> woofing it down <laughs> As he's doing all these events too, within yeah. a matter of milliseconds, and he's like, he realizes like I'm on empty because he's got that little meter about how much energy he has based yes. upon his uh, intake because he, otherwise he he has no energy and he can't actually run that fast. Right. Which what was I liked about nice. that was the fact that so Barry says, hey. If I touch something, it gets affected. So, like, if you look at the one from, like, if you look at Quicksilver, so Quicksilver Mm -hmm. would just grab people. And even though the one thing Quicksilver did, which I thought was smart, was he would grab people and then just hold their heads so they didn't get whiplash. Correct. And then, you know, speed them to, to safety. And if you think about the way he was doing it, you just took a human body and in less than one thousandth of a second, you know, had them travel three football fields. That has to do something to the human body. That it has to destroy him. So what he in this movie was saying is like, if he did that to a human body, there are effects about that. So mm-hmm. like, so when he saw the babies that the, oh, there was one baby that was about to you know get hit with a scalpel. There was another one that was about. So instead of him moving the babies, what he did was he moved objects in the way to deflect other objects Yes, in order for it not to affect the babies. And I thought that was really smart. Yeah. That was a very smart way of doing that. And then the dog, too. 
Oh which... my god. <laughs> <laughs> he looks so damn CG, I will say that. <laughs> but it was humorous to the point where it, it kind yeah. of like it's like, all right, yeah, this isn't real. This is a fantasy world. This is a comic book movie. Uh, at the very end, with the ending credits, we do get more of the dog falling, yeah, and all the little things that he he was going through during that falling scene, which is very humorous, and I do enjoy that. Now, hey man, I'm, G- aller- I'm allergic to dogs, and I would actually uh, be on Benadryl if I had that dog in my life. <laughs> <laughs> that 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 whole scene itself, a little bit out there, but entertaining nonetheless, and I can understand it from. A parent's point of view, if like the baby's falling down from a building, but he did <laughs> save them in the end. Yeah, well, one of them was in a microwave. Well, that I can't condone because uh, it was like, how really, how long was that baby in that microwave at that seconds? Point? That, maybe seconds because, okay. yeah, because uh, remember, uh, he but as a, a viewer and somebody who's a parent is looking at it going. This is literally over five minutes of me watching these things fall. That baby is still in that microwave. I am upset about this. Yeah, but they no. don't realize it because they're not putting themselves out of this world and thinking of the idea of the character. He's exactly. super fast. So that just not not to uh, not to defend it, but to let you people know, it's like I understand your your anger and issues with this but in the end fictitious and the babies were saved (laughs) yeah Yeah, it's a movie where it's like come on just have a just just kind of have a a sense of humor about it yeah i think that i think the people that will enjoy that are the people so i've seen parents that and i've seen videos of this and i always find them hilarious where you got parents that they have like you know their their babies but they make the babies do things or they put them in videos doing and you can see the babies having a great time doing it mm-hmm. but it's stuff that you would never see a parent probably do nope and one of them was the funniest thing where it's just like how do i pick up stuff from the floor so he has his baby on his hands and he actually takes the baby flips him upside down and tells the baby you see it on the floor and the and you know how little babies just want to grab everything Mm-hmm. sees it grabs it and then he pulls the baby back up and he you know and he grabs it and you see the baby with a big smile and it's like he's using the baby as a pickup stick you know like those little sticks with the yeah, little claw exactly. right That's yeah basically what he's using the baby for and i found it hilarious and there are people out there that are like oh my god i can't believe you're doing that to a child and i'm like you know human beings are very resilient so stop it <laughs> <laughs> oh man no but, but it was great it was great yeah, that 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 introduction scene and getting Ben back as Batfleck, just as Batfleck himself, uh, you know, we'd get to see him as Bruce because uh, I, within that particular scene, I believe, or just after that, Barry realizes that he could go beyond the speed of light, or like because he was reflecting, and then he wound up going beyond the speed of light, and then he realized, oh well, I'm going through time. Right. He, he realized time was manipulated. And then he brought it up to, to Bruce, who we know as Ben Affleck. And even he states and gives him that code of warning of like, you know, you don't want to mess with that. But I could save your parents. I could save my mom. Right. And, and then he even basically, you know, it's like Bruce telling him and being the words of wisdom that he is stating that it should just be as it is. Correct. Because, uh, I mean, Bruce... Bruce said it very well. He's like, we would not be the people we are if without it wasn't that, for those without those tragedy uh, tra- tragedies in our lives. Yeah, the tragic events and, that yeah. resulted in their being who they are and their powers or how they Correct. are. Which yeah. means that they have saved a ton of people because of that, you know, that one event in their lives and him going back to do that can change so many things, of course. But, so yeah, and then you know, Barry winds up ignoring that possibility and then doing what he wants and going back at that point. And uh, when he does do that, he literally realizes, Oh, well, 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 before that was a little, his realization was pretty funny because it was during the fall and you see his head come out during the fall, looking at the babies and everything else. Right. The the other him, which is a previs version of him is Mm -hmm. there. 
but he goes back to the time when his mother like passed away and then he was able to go back even further from well, the reasoning of why and it was it had to do with her father his father going go back to get another can of tomatoes for the fact right. that she was making pasta and stuff and she ran out of tomatoes. So let's talk about that for a bit. Um so Nora Allen, who is played by Maribel uh Virgin, mm-hmm. um, which is a Latina actress. Yes. And in the movie, th- you know, she has a Latin accent. And mm-hmm. as a matter of fact, they're dancing a uh a so she's there she's dancing a salsa song with, with Barry, which then Barry, I was, I was yeah. like, so Barry's half Latino. Yes. And I've heard an uproar of so many people because like, oh, that's not the way it's supposed to be. Now you and I'm like, again, I have no connection. You know, I have no invested interest in the flash or nothing like that. But I thought her part was played beautifully by this woman. Yeah. And those moments that she had with Barry were very (laughs) tender and just. You could see why Barry wanted to save his mom so much because of the relationship he had with her and mm-hmm. how, you know, what, how he saw her and that moment that you were talking about, you know, in the, uh, in the, in, in the supermarket. Yeah. When he finally like says goodbye to her in his own and, way, he puts the sunglasses right. on and she asks him to take it off. And then, right. Oh, you remind me of somebody and literally and she was just basically yeah, looking at her own that was such son. a beautiful scene yeah and you could and again this is why it kind of pisses me off about ezra miller being you know who he is now but the way he portrayed the hurt in his you know in his, his face eyes yeah and his eyes and everything knowing that this is the only moment he'll ever have with his mom ever again because he does have to now put the timeline back the way it was yeah and you know, you could see that, wow, you know, I'll just never have this again. And, I, you know, and it's unfortunate. Mm-hmm. Um, it was such, I thought that was such a really great scene. I mean, that was, it, it touched me a lot. I mean, I, I was, almost, I mean, my eyes were welling up because I was like, wow. Because then I thought of my mom, you know, <laughs> would I have done the, the same thing for my mom? And I think I would have. Yeah. Um, but you know, so yeah, no, that was a beautiful scene, but that's why I want to talk about it because I know that a lot of people had a problem with her being half Latina or her being Latina with, and now Barry is half Latino, I guess. Um, yeah, because well, Ron, Livis- <laughs> Ron Livingston plays Henry Allen at Correct. that point. And that's the other thing that people were upset about. Why couldn't they get the original actor from, Well, that you was know. Billy Crudup. And I really understand why they did that. And I understand why, why? Billy Crudup dropped it. All right. So Billy Crudup has already been involved with another DC movie. He was called Watchmen. He played Dr. Manhattan. He oh. didn't really want to come back. He probably thought that it was a one-off in the last, uh, what was it, Justice League. Right. When they did that. So he probably thought, okay, I already did that one and done. I've already been the Rocketeer. I've already been Dr. Manhattan. I've already bit played Henry Allen once. I don't need to be doing this again. Oh, he's uh, the guy to play the Rocketeer. Yeah. Okay. And marry Jennifer Connelly. But yeah, I know well, in your face. <laughs> he married he was a first he that was her first husband? Or yes. are you talking about Yeah, okay. that was her first husband. Okay. So uh yeah. No, uh no, she is currently married to the vision himself. Right. So uh but yeah, he, he I could understand that. I had a little bit of an issue. I'm like, why is Ron Livingston in it? And I'm like, oh, and then I realized it and I'm like yeah, Billy Crudup didn't even come back for Watchmen, the TV show that came out a couple of years ago as well. Right. So he didn't come back as Dr. Manhattan. So they kind of eliminated that. I'm like, all right, because Billy Crudup is one of those actors actor, very much like Edward Norton. Have we seen Edward Norton come back as the Incredible Hulk again? No, right. After how many years? No. Well, that was his issues with Marvel and everything else, but he originally was looking to take a little bit of control, but I think uh, the way that uh, Billy Crudup was, is like, he just didn't want to do it again. And they just got somebody who would be similar in looks to him, which would be Ron Livingston now, which right. is fine. Ron Livingston's a, a really good actor and I really enjoy his work. Uh, we all remember him from office, office space. 
and uh, and <laughs> and other movies like that. Right. So uh, he's a great comedic actor, but in this case, he was he was a little bit comedic, but he was he knows how to do the drama as well. Okay. As far as Maribel Verdu, I thought she was amazing. Mm-hmm. That whole Latino issue, I had no problem with it whatsoever. For the fact that on TV we've had a brown hair, brown eyed kid playing Barry Allen. Uh, for seven, eight seasons of The Flash on the CW with right. Grant Gustin. And in the comics, Barry Allen is a blonde, blue-eyed white boy. Right. And I'm sorry. It's like, fine. I, I'll accept whoever and who, however they play them. You know, well, if you think about it, um, Supergirl, again, done by a Latina. Nobody has a problem with that. I had no problem with that either. Nobody had a problem with her also having black hair because usually, I mean, in the she's, combo, blonde, she's blonde normally. Yeah. So and blue eyes. People praised. I mean, so far people praised her for being Supergirl and they wanted to see more of that Supergirl. So I don't understand why it's like, it's okay for this, but not okay for the other. I think it had to do with the whole Ezra Miller bashing at that point. Could I, be. And they could, they did. It was like, oh, here's something else to throw out. It's like, oh, it's like, I already hate him. Well, here's, a, well, this is the reason why. I'm like, all right, he was already in Justice League years ago. Did you enjoy his performance then? Yes, but then, now it's different. I'm like, you're trying to come up with a point and a reason to hate him more. And my attitude is like, don't go racist on that. Well, I mean, it's despicable, the stuff that he's done. It um, is, but don't be racist about it, in my opinion. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's just you so know, it's stupid. Like, I completely agree on that. <laughs> yeah. I, it's like I could only say it in one way. It's like you're just being right. racist. Right. But uh, I really did. And she was amazing. I love that scene, too, the way there, she was getting him to sing. Hey, Ma, I would love to eat her food. <laughs> <laughs> it's like she, she looked like she knew what the hell she was doing. Probably I'm glad you're talking about spicy. food. <laughs> 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 the way you just said that, I will eat her. I was like, oh, are we going there? <laughs> no, we're not going there. I said food. <laughs> food, <laughs> okay. Like, I want the Jeez. food. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> but yeah, the, other th- the other thing that I heard about was, uh, well, what's her name? Um, Kelsey Clemens, who plays Iris West. Oh, yes. Yes. Um, People are like, well, she's supposed to be white. And it's like, yeah. And somebody was saying, well, I don't know why they're following the CW thing. I don't mind it. I didn't mind it either. But uh, again, that was a racist beat. There's just so many people that are just putting so many things to this movie on reasons why they should not watch it. It's it's literally just bashing the movie. Yeah. Bashing the movie and and stuff like that. It's like, mm, no. All right. My let, let's go to a different reality where Ezra Miller didn't do any of that. Would this movie do well? I think it would. I think and it would have done. I think it w- with the same crap that's been happening with Warner Brothers, I think it would have done slightly better. Yes. Maybe it would have done 400 million. Correct. Instead of the two hundred million, but it would not have done the nine hundred or you know nine hundred million dollars billion dollars that they were billion looking dollars at. that they wanted. Yeah, it would have just done slightly better. It's just that a lot of people I feel that are they they also don't want to get invested in a movie that it's like oh so now this is not part of that other universe and especially you know. with everything changing too and right. it's like so. they, they they just basically abandoned it. Uh, don't abandon your. Uh, what you love or have interest in everybody. That's all I could say. If you really like something like it, I went out to see this in the theater. I enjoyed it again. I enjoyed it too. I mean, so uh, I mean, I could start nitpicking it of course, but I enjoyed it too. Exactly. It's like we can nitpick all the, all we want about this particular movie, but you know, I, I thought the actors, all of them did well, including, Ezra Miller. Right. And uh, I, I, of all things, too, it was like, which leads me as soon as he goes back in time, him dealing with himself. And I thought the funniest (laughs) thing I ever heard on a podcast that Kevin Smith had said about his daughter when they were watching this movie was, do you think he got paid twice, dad? Because he was paying two Barry Allens, and I thought that was hilarious that that Harley would actually ask that of her father. But But that's a good question. (laughs) 
<laughs> I don't think he got paid twice. That depends. That all depends on you. I think that depends on your uh, on your manager. If your manager saying so, he has to play two parts, and it's basically eighty percent of the movie. <laughs> shouldn't he get twice the money? <laughs> <laughs> But you know, it all depends on it all depends on your star power too on that. That, that as to, well right? too. Yeah, he's fairly new. If you think uh, within the past ten years, I would say he's that new right. as far as an actor and status. And I don't think he garnered that. And this was supposed to be the one where he would be able to garner that kind of money. Where it's like, yeah, I could request two million dollars. I'm <laughs> like Emma Stone. Twenty million, <laughs> twenty thirty million. Yeah. <laughs> or whatever you know whatever but. it is it's like you know some people think of themselves that way but yeah honestly uh i the one thing that i did enjoy and i've already mentioned it and i kind of made that joke it's like my favorite you know batman returns to movie the fact that we get michael keaton he goes back in time not only does he you know ezra has to deal with working with himself losing a tooth <laughs> Right. Uh, yeah and dealing with the whole the whole tomato can debacle he takes the tomato can puts it in her cart and that's really what sets everything in into junction but he gets thrown out by dark flash into this time where he has to deal with himself and then they go seek out batman and he doesn't tell him he's just like we need to go seek out bruce wayne why well he's important this and that and then he doesn't tell his <laughs> other younger self who bruce wayne is and then he goes wait and then during the whole thing it's like wait bruce wayne is batman <laughs> <laughs> you know it's funny because, so when i watched it i i enjoyed especially i enjoyed you know yeah you know don't get me wrong i mean i still like michael keaton as batman it's not still not my favorite but i enjoyed that part i enjoyed the just him being back in in, in that role yeah, my question throughout, uh, and it was so funny because I was like, and they somehow explained it. But my question, my question was, mm -hmm. when he started fighting, oh, that wasn't him. <laughs> I was like, where was that Batman? <laughs> That's in exactly the Tim, why in the Tim Burton movies, because in the Tim Burton movies he was very stiff. It was just, oh yeah, the fighting in those movies just sucked. Oh yeah. So, but in this, he was just like almost, almost up there with like the Ben Affleck stuff. Yes. <laughs> and then later, I hear that I think the director said that the that the Michael Keaton Batman of mm -hmm. this universe is not the same one from the from Tim the Burton. Burton. One. Yeah. So then I was like, oh, okay, I think. I <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll accept that i guess as an excuse <laughs> but they had that icon they had the they the great thing about it is the bat wing you know i love the bat wing the only i had oh, a yeah. few issues with the, some of the physics of what it could do but oh, okay. it's you know it's a, it's it's like somebody says out there it's comic books um <laughs> but i'd like I like the fact that they took the bat wing and when they were uh they dropped out of the bat wing, the bat wing you know, the in the background there was the moon. So they had the bat wing and the moon again. Yes, we got you know, that and, homage. And the shot. Yeah, that homage. I thought that was actually really good. And they had the soundtrack of yes. yep. you know, Danny Elfman. Yeah, Danny Elfman's soundtrack was in there, and it was like like I said, it's it's a Batman Returns movie again. <laughs> better, better <laughs> action. Everything that we always wanted from a Keaton movie, and we got it. So right. we got the Keaton Batman twice, in my opinion. <laughs> so I was like, I honestly, before we even got Bat Batfleck or Clooney or Kilmer or any of that stuff, or even uh, uh, what's his name, Nolan's Batman as well. And oh, yeah, yeah. But before we even got that, all we had was Keaton back in 1989. And to me, I saw that in the theater and I had like a dedicated, like particular ticket to go see that movie. I <laughs> loved it. So for the longest time, Keaton was my movie Batman until we got Batfleck. Because as soon as I heard that Ben was going to be Batman, for, right? Or, uh, you know, uh, the first iteration of it. I was like, he's going to hit it out of the park and he's going to be my new. And he was and still is. Uh, I really would want him to come back. He has he's slated to come back one more time 
for Aquaman. In what? Is he? Yes. Huh. For, for the next Aquaman movie. So he's slated to make another appearance as Bruce Wayne slash Batman in Aquaman 3. So I'm looking forward to that because that'll be the last time we get to see him. Yeah, you could Hopefully. tell he you could tell he loves the character, man. I mean, he he loved that character. He was really invested in it. I think it just took a toll on his life because he invested so much in trying to do that independent, like that standalone Batman movie. Right. And, you know, with the arguments with the with the actual movie company itself, Warner Brothers and production yeah. and everything else and taking control. And I just kind of got lost. And then he lost himself and lost his mind a little bit and went back I mean, to drinking yeah. and dealing. And he was also dealing with a divorce Correct. at that time as well. So he did lose himself. So I'm sure he's a little bit scarred from it. I wouldn't put it past Very scarred. Him. Have you seen the tattoo that he has on his back? Oh, yes. The big Phoenix tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I have. Oh my goodness. Oh, poor guy. Poor guy. Uh well it's J Lo's problem now. She gets to see that every morning. Yep. Um, but I I look forward to the fact that we could have that possibility of him later on down the road. I could literally see him on a in a Batman Beyond movie. Right. And and taking hold and uh, and teaching out a new young Batman. Actually, that that's part of some of the news later on that we'll get into because there was something else that was supposed to happen beyond mm. this movie that they just ejected completely and why we don't have a Batgirl movie okay. that came out. Well, yeah, well, that we know that now. already, but <laughs> but um, but literally, uh, we we got the Keaton version that I always wanted. I, majority of the m- movie is literally with Keaton in it. His mm-hmm. spaghetti incident where he explains how time works was <laughs> yeah. amazing. And I thought it was great and how he kind of summed it all up with spaghetti. And then of I course, mean, I don't know. I don't know if uh, I don't know if uh, time travel physics were correct on that. I mean, real world not, time, time, but this is really. comic book physics. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And on top of that, the the nods that we got to for alternate realities was amazing fun as well. Like right. I, I still want to see that Eric Stoltz back to the future movie they have in that particular universe, just to see what it's like. And <laughs> and maybe that top gun movie with Michael J. Fox. Oh my God. That, that would be, uh, I, do you want to get into some of the spoilers on? Uh, so, you know, for, uh, we I already mean, we've been are getting, spoiling. Yeah, we're in spoilers, but like towards the end. Sure. With all the, so I liked, the fact that they, when he was in the speed force and he got to see all these different versions of, you know, Superman, well, you know, flash Superman, Batman and all that, that they showed Christopher Reeve. Yep. They showed Adam West as the Batman, but you know, they also showed uh Nicholas cage, uh, the version of Superman that he was supposed to do. Yep. Kevin Smith's uh, uh, scripted Superman film that never got completed, but they right. put a spider in there. That yeah, he was because of the director. That script. Yeah, because the director was into spiders and stuff like that. But um, you know, so they had like all these little versions, which I was like, first of all, a lot of people criticize. Oh, it looks very CG, and the and from what the director that was, was my issue with it. It looked a little bit CG, but I figured within a year they could easily right. just ramp it up. Now, mind you, there was a few times when you saw Christopher Reeve and Supergirl. Uh, I'm forgetting her name. But they, uh, when they were flying together, that looked a little bit more realistic. Right. Uh, the Nicolas Cage, they could have done a little bit more touch up in the CG to make it a little bit more realistic than it was. But I accepted it. Yeah. Uh, we got jo- George Reeves, Superman in yeah. there as well. That was uh, in there. Yeah. We got the Adam West. Uh, there was somebody else there as Jay Garrick. But speculation is, and everybody reached out to uh, John Wesley Ship asking is that you? And they're like, he's like, no. And then everybody kept speculating because it looks like this CW version of Jay Garrett. It does. And it's not Teddy Sears because Teddy Sears went on Twitter and stating flat out, that is not me. Literally, if they were, if that was him, they would have to pay likeness rights to him for that purpose. Correct. And uh, if they didn't and somebody analyzes it and goes, "Uh, yeah, that's Teddy. He's going to get a payday. Out of well, that in some way. Well, not well, a huge good, good, luck, good luck on the 25 cents he's going to get, you know, for that because <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like you were saying, you know, like, uh, you know, maybe they could invest, you know, in trying to, you know, fix the CG. 
I yeah. doubt Warner Brothers will invest a penny in this to try to make it any better. No, um, they but won't. according to the director, mm-hmm. he said that that was done on purpose, and maybe that's an excuse. But he said that was done on purpose, okay, to make it seem a little more like not of this world or something like that. Which I was like, well, well, okay, but yeah, those were actually, but they were cool scenes. I they mean, were. yeah, I yeah. will admit it. Yeah, I really did enjoy them. I'm not saying and, I didn't. And there's a big part of me that I, you know, after seeing Nicolas Cage. With his long hair and all that stuff, I'm like, I'm so glad they never made that movie. <laughs> <laughs> they could still do a movie with them, trust me. Oh yeah. no, 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 not right now. They can't. But um, uh, it was just one of those things. Like, oh, okay. I mean, they had some really cool things in there. I yeah. thought. I mean, that that whole part in the end was, I thought, pretty cool. I don't know. Well, the way that with that whole time warp lapse and you got worlds colliding at that point, because that's literally what it was, this crisis on infinite earths, it's all worlds colliding into one super event. And that's what they couldn't really allude to because they really, this is just flashpoint at this point. This is not crisis on infinite earths. That uh, was like a a comic book, huge comic book series at that point for DC uh, along with, 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 secret wars for marvel was back in the day as well because i remember when those two particular runs were huge just like mm-hmm. the dark knight returns and uh you know they this was just tapping on that very much similar to what cw did with infinite crisis and that that was a pr- that was done pretty well for what they could do with the budget they have for a tv show and right. the characters that they had but With this, I thought it was done very well, just the same for the fact that, honestly, this is our last hurrah until Mm -hmm. we get the James Gunn universe that's out there and see what he could do when it comes to these particular uh, IPs that are out there when it comes to DC and and movie uh, for these characters. It's very hard, and I I look forward to what we get, but for what we got here, yeah, the those that whole little uh swirling worlds colliding event I, like i said the only drawback i had was the cg uh i know other people out there like yourself rob were were like i'm happy with what i got because of what we got there which is good and i'm i'm not saying i'm not happy i was real yeah. i really enjoyed it because i was like oh wow look who it is oh wow look who it is i tell people because some people are like oh did you like it and you know blah and i say look here's how movies work (laughs) no more of here's how i have been approaching these superhero movies right Mm -hmm. this has not been a good year for superhero movies at all you got two superhero movies that were good Mm -hmm. gardens of galaxy 3 and definitely uh spider-man across the spider-verse yes right so the other ones you know uh, what is it shazam this one is it's really making people just go they're done Two out of five ain't bad. (laughs) Yeah, I'm at that point where stuff have gotten so screwed up that I'm just taking it in as it's coming. Yeah. And when people, you know, start, I laugh. I have to laugh because I'm like, I don't care anymore. Like, it's just Warner Brothers has really made it where they don't make me care for these movies. If you if they wanted to, like, take. The Justice League and just have them, you know, in a skit like, you know, uh, like the the show Friends where they're all sharing an apartment and, you know, and they make it a comedy. I would have accepted that, too, because at this point, things are just until if James Gunn can just uh, what is it? Bring back my faith in this. Yeah. Then great. But if not. And then, of course, Marvel being Marvel these last year, year and a half or whatever it is. Mm hmm. Also, ha- you know, has, you know, kind of shaken my faith on that. I've taken superhero movies to the point where it's like, I just take it in as it is. If it's enjoyable, sure. If not, I could care less at this point if it's that accurate or not, because I'm just done with. Well, a lot of people are seeing this as the twilight of, like, the superhero films, too. Yeah. Like, it, it's had its run very much like the Westerns back in the uh, late 60s, early 70s. Right. And, and then they got to the point of spaghetti Westerns where, like, kind of phased out they're still being done and i think in, in europe but let me tell you their uh, spaghetti westerns were great <laughs> yeah but i'm just saying even right. like superhero films are still great but 
I don't think we're going to see as much in comparison based upon like what we had stated before with Kevin Feige, where yeah. they want to do quality over quantity. Now, they could still do whatever the hell they want over there in Marvel with their Disney Plus platform. Right. Uh, Max could still do what they need to do with their uh, DC properties as far as with Teen Titans, because those shows have been doing well. And uh, a lot of them have been doing well. Uh, the Teen Titans is like they had to move it. There was only one show that was in contention that they, they had to cancel over the years that I really wanted. And I was looking forward to. And Derek Mears was great at it when he was in it was Swamp Thing. And they just. Oh, yeah. They I heard a that lot of good l- things about that. I haven't seen it yet because oh, it's still I'm, it's still out there. It's still out there. It's a whole season. Yeah, and uh, they actually had to redo the last two episodes and combine them to make it one full episode, according to Derek when I talked to him about it. Right. But they, um, you know, they had opportunities, but it's a lot about the uh, the company itself and where they're projecting. Apparently, yeah. Kevin Feige saw where the direction was going with Marvel, what wasn't working, and what will be working, and that's why they're re doing a lot of things that's why we're getting a new cut of the marvels before the marvels even comes out because right. uh, uh the previous stuff for it people didn't want to see it when they were going to the screeners of what they had they're like oh we don't want that and then they <laughs> had a they had a backtrack and change that uh right. we've we have issues with jonathan majors uh with with his situation and they're banking their world on kang the conqueror so well uh, now i hear that um they actually have maybe proof that he didn't do the things that he did oh did? i heard that too yeah, yeah the jury so. came out and pro- yeah pronounced him and then somebody backed him up but yeah there there there's so much that's out there so they're probably going to be vetting a lot of the actors that they have right regarding certain events because this was one of those movies just like with uh with jonathan majors with the kang stuff mm-hmm. with marvel you got Ezra Miller, so they kind of vetted that, and at this point, they could recast because with James Gunn, they're going to reboot everything, right. and you know they they could easily they already found their new Superman, and uh, um, I saw that, and it's I'm curious because guy looks too young in my opinion, and the way well he looks, remember that this is supposed to be like the first few years that he or like you know just like. His like the Batman Begins kind of thing, where it's like you know, yeah. um, his first year or two of, of being Superman. Yeah. So of course he's going to be young, but when you look at him, like when I first looked at him, like just a, my quick reaction to it was like he looks a little like Henry Cavill. I'm like, <laughs> dude, come on, man! <laughs> Once again, <laughs> you find somebody that looks like Henry Cavill, but you won't hire Henry Cavill. Henry, it's, what did you do? do. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, well, let's talk about a little bit more with Henry Cavill's co-stars from uh Man of Steel who came back for this movie in the flesh. Yeah, um Michael, Michael Shannon. Shannon. Yeah. He played, I thought he, he was great. He was great as General Zod, but uh recent interviews with him regarding his uh portrayal because he, he's not one to do sequels i guess they threw him some decent amount of money right and uh he yeah said, he, did, he said he did it for the money he literally did it for the money he was at that point so i guess if you throw a lot of money at somebody they'll they'll take it and they'll do it yeah but uh yeah he said i felt like an action figure being moved along a certain way <laughs> to play this role and I, you know, uh, look at Jeremy Irons. Jeremy Irons came back as Alfred Pennyworth again. Right. And, uh, you know, everybody else came back, which was fine. But I don't think with the other people with like, uh, I don't think with Gal, with Ben and uh, Jason Momoa coming back as those characters, like spoilers, yes, that there's an end credit scene with Arthur Curry and uh, Barry Allen. But they... They, I think they did it because they liked the idea and they wanted to complete being more of a completionist within their character to do something. Plus, there's still going to be an Aquaman three that comes out. Well, yeah, and and but from what I hear, the um, 
the test screening as on uh, the test screening on that have been atrocious. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, but, we'll, but we'll the see. company has already invested enough money to the point because it's more upon what they paid out for Batgirl or Batwoman, right? That was supposed to come out, but they canceled. So I don't think they're just going to throw it off to the side because Momoa still has sellability for the the movies. You know, he was in the last Fast and the Furious movie, so he's obviously going to be drawing crowds to right. theaters just because he's in it, and every woman wants to see him without a shirt on. So I want to see him without a shirt on <laughs> and I'm a straight man. <laughs> well, buy a lot of his wine. He has a uh, dedicated wine that he sells online too. So. Does he really? Yeah. I'm a big does. wine person. So I, I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, my friend Ben bought a, a couple of bottles one year and then it was hard to come by at one point. And Jason it, Momoa wine. Yeah. Hmm. Look for it. I got to look for that. Yeah. All these people uh, are, came back because of the credibility of the show and the and the characters that they portrayed. So I'm glad that we got that. And then I loved how the story arc, uh, when it comes to the actual movie itself, the story arc, and how they were able to do it. The futility and what Barry was doing, because obviously, spoilers, he winds up encountering his dark self is the reason why he got pushed into that same universe where he was 18 years old and he's like 26 years old. And, you know, you got 26 year old Barry Allen being called old Barry and you get the young Barry. Right. But the reason why that comes into play is during that battle scene with Zod. And it was a Kobayashi Maru for, uh, barry allen <laughs> he couldn't beat it and he, anything he did it was not going to work yeah. and it wasn't going to work and we saw batman die several times we saw <laughs> kara Zarel die several times as well right and oh it was so sad to see but and then we see the redemption of like keaton batman he just like he literally purposely kills himself yes at, at one point and oh uh, and just to give a little bit more of my my love of that Batman, uh, when they were uh, just the just the fun part of this Keaton Batman that I just love is like when they get to the point in Russia and they're breaking out Kara's RL, and, and he goes, he realizes it's not Batman. He goes, "All right, we don't have the right person. Let's get the hell out of here." <laughs> He's like ready to ditch her because it's it's not Superman. Let's right. go screw this check <laughs> and, then, and then on top of that uh they get to that point of like trying to leave to get back to the bat uh, the the bat plane above above the prison he gets like a little measuring tape that he goes oh how much do you weigh how much do you both weigh and it's like it was like back to batman 1989 again right and it's like but at least there's no joke it's like yeah you weigh 129. Uh-huh. That's like none of that anymore. But he brings out like typical math. He's using a ruler <laughs> to figure his explosive because he's weighted for the amount of weight of people. So he has right. to time it right. I, I thought that was perfect the way they actually created that particular Batman and how driven he was. And it was true to the, the, the character that Keaton played in 89, as well as in Batman Returns. Right. Uh, and a couple of years after that, but yeah, I, I just love that. We got that. And then, you know, a lot of credit to Sasha Callie too, for her portrayal as Kara Zarel too, because uh, you could see there was a lot of heart and a lot of people like they love her so much. They want her to come back. <laughs> it was like, they can easily bring her yeah. back. If they need Unfortunately, to. this, you know, this, I think might be her only movie that she'll ever do. Uh, you know, Supergirl. Supergirl. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, uh, just to throw in a few motivation, but the, the story points that I, I like is that how they were able to utilize the uh, tomato can of tomatoes as a MacGuffin <laughs> and, yeah. uh, uh, as uh, a, you know, a MacGuffin in a room that's there because he that's how Barry was able to put it in his mother's cart and change things. And then he has to go back and put it back it's just to make things all right again. Right. And it's good true to the storytelling of what they were doing within this and that's really what matters most is how you start off and how you end it was it the greatest of time travel movies not really no was it entertaining yes 
So in a nutshell for me, uh, that that's how I feel about it. Yeah. They, uh, you know, it's again, it's a shame that we're not going to see this universe again, but we got it for what it is. And, you know, that's the beauty of having, you know, your own DVDs and, you know, especially buy the damn DVDs. That's what I tell everybody. <laughs> buy your media because the way streaming services are doing things now where they're just taking, th- putting things in and then they take it away because, yes. you know, they don't want to pay, uh, you know, uh, some of the actors or writers, you know, or because of the licensing, the too. licensing, you know, they'll license it to somebody else. It's just a mess out there. So that's why I own, I like owning my own media. I can yeah. always revisit these things. Mm-hmm. Um, even, even when you say, even when you go to iTunes and let's say you buy a movie for, I don't know, $5, $10, whatever it is. If the studio for some reason feels that it should not be a stream, iTunes can then take that away from your library, even though you paid for it and you cannot see it. But you're, guess pay, what? They, you're literally paying for the licensing of that movie for your uh, iTunes collection is literally exactly what you're doing. You're not paying. You're not owning the movie. You're paying a license for that movie. So that's why I like owning my media, because you know what? I have it on disc. So if I can't find it anywhere else, I could, you know, I always have the disc version of that. But yeah. that's, you know, that being said, I just think that it's a shame that these things have gotten, you know, been in a big mess. Uh, well, it's it's, a, it's a great universe to explore. Mm-hmm. Um, Marvel and DC have always been very different from each other, mm-hmm. um, and I think Marvel, you know, Marvel for the first ten years did Amazing. a phenomenal job with what they did. Um, you know, it's the next ten years that you know we got to see where it's going to go. But DC from the very beginning hasn't gotten it right, and I wish they did because these are some very beloved characters. I, you know, I, I was never a big DC person, but I did get into it. And especially like Batman and some of the things with Superman, I really, really got into those characters and I liked them a lot. And I just wish they could do them justice. So, yeah, that's that's my biggest thing on that. Um, what did you, uh, by the way, what did you think of Clooney coming out of the... <laughs> <laughs> Well, that that actually goes into uh, my interesting facts of like the movie itself. So there were three pr- particular endings that were involved right. with this particular uh, movie. They filmed it. So at the very end for the first one that the director himself, Andy Machete, he came up with the original idea. And originally it was supposed to be Barry meets Supergirl and Keaton's Batman at the end. Right. Uh, no, no, it wasn't. Uh, no, it wasn't. It was supposed to be a Supergirl, Superman. Sorry, Superman, Gadot's Wonder Woman, and Ben Affleck's Batman at right. the jury steps when his father was praised. They changed that, and then they said, "All right, well, you go back and redo this." So that's when Warner Brothers comes in. And go, all right, well, you need to do. Supergirl and Keaton's Batman at the very end, because if you see some of the uh, trailers, there's a, a, vi- a visage of uh, of Supergirl coming down in front of the jury steps right. uh, of from uh, front of the courthouse steps. So you see her and that's when Keaton would come up. There are still images of you see Keaton coming out of a limousine with the gray hair meeting up with Barry. That mm-hmm. was actually promoted stuff before the movie. We even got a trailer. Oh, I remember that where people was like, oh, my God, it's uh, it's Keaton Beck as, you know, uh, you know, Bruce Wayne. Correct. And those were early on filming occurrences in front of the courthouse. So it was like, uh, I think the one with Gal Gadot and Henry Cavill, that one where they see Barry in the front coming down and his father has been exonerated and then you see Batfleck show up in a limo and they're there and they congratulate and saying, Hey, Barry, it's back to work again. Let's go. And then right. that's how it leads off to. And then the, the, the company said, all right, well, no, we don't want that. And then machete goes, Oh, okay. Well, uh, Barry meets Supergirl and Keaton's Batman. And then they did that. So they thought that was going to be the finalized one. And then it <laughs> wasn't until the, uh, after that James Gunn was brought in, and hands were signed, uh, hands were shook, and contracts were signed. Things got changed from the narrative so that they 
they're like, well, you know what? We're going to redo this. And literally within like within a month before the movie was put out in theaters, they filmed a scene mm. with uh, Ezra Miller. And that's where Clooney came in. Now, mind you, it was a closed off set and he was able to come in, do it. And uh, there was talks. And then this is where uh, somebody had said on a podcast saying that uh, there was talks about what was going on on set during that day when Clooney showed up and apparently Clooney gave a bit of advice like during the day as they were filming to Ezra Miller of how to present yourself in Mm. media and in the world through your celebrity. He basically gave him the Batman shame on you, Barry. Right. And and gave him that talk. And uh, I, that's why we haven't seen or heard a lot from Ezra Miller regarding this movie and any promotion and anything or even talking to uh, publicity. Well, that's a Warner Brothers decision. They don't want him to be in front of the media. And yeah. as a matter of fact, I remember that a, a, a Hollywood executive out there actually said that probably having the writer strike is a good thing for Warner Brothers because... Since, you know, you always have these talk shows that are made for, you know, you have uh, celebrities come on, they pitch their movies and things like that to promote the movies. Yeah. In this case, since there are no talk shows because of this writer strike, Mm -hmm. there is no way for any of these celebrities to actually pitch, you know, of course, the, uh, the movie. But it was a good way of having because then if you have. Let's say if you have Michael Keaton come out there, if you have Ben Affleck, you have a, you know Sasha Kyle, all those people come out there, not Ezra Miller into mm-hmm. these talk shows. Yeah, they say that probably that could have been even more damaging uh, because they're like, so where is the star of this thing? So by not having <laughs> none of those shows there, no one comes on, and that's kind of an excuse to say, oh, this is a reason why you know um, Ezra Miller didn't come out there. So, but they also, I think, from what I've heard too, was that Warner Brothers made sure to have Ezra Miller pretty much calm down for the like the last for like this last year and a half. That's why you haven't really heard much about him because he's been in rehab, he's been in or uh, in a mental health uh, facility uh, to get treated and all these things. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's uh, there's a lot of things out there. Yeah, which are true. I'm not sure, but I did like having George Clooney there because I have always said, and I'll still stand by this. I have always said that the actor George Mm -hmm. Clooney could have been a fantastic Batman in the right hands, right? Because even Ben Affleck on the Joe Schumacher would have been horrible. Oh, yeah. So. George Clooney has, I mean, when you look at George Clooney, first of all, he has the great looks. He has the, uh, he has the swagger. uh, So he could portray a billionaire Bruce Wayne Wayne perfectly. And if done right, he could have done the Batman part right too with the right story. It's just that never happened. So the fact that they did this towards the end, it was one, I was surprised that he did it. But he has always made fun of himself for uh, for the role in uh, Batman. Uh, (laughs) And he always, you know, he always brings that up and, you know, and it's kind of a tongue in cheek thing. And I was I was when I saw that, I was like, you know, I I respect them for visiting the character again and just having a sense of humor about it. Not like other actors. I was like, I will never touch that actor again. I will never do another DC movie again or whatever. You know, <laughs> you know they social- actually wanted Christian Bale at one point. They actually reached out and he said no. Well, from what I heard also was that they, the so the director said the reason there was not a lot of different other DC properties there is that like they had way too much. Mm-hmm. That they could have included in that last piece where they had all the because yeah, one of them was gonna be Christian Bell as Batman, the other one's gonna be um probably like some of the uh what is it, uh WB stuff. Oh yeah, in yeah. there. They so did they film had, that stuff for uh yeah, they yeah. had like a lot they had a lot of property that they could have used and they had to nitpick and choose what they could put in there when they couldn't put in there because of time and things like that. So yeah. A lot of people uh, call it the Grant Gustin snub because they kind of <laughs> disregarded the uh, that universe, the CW. 
Right. Well, listen, man. I mean, again, uh, and and as a matter of fact, the uh, the Berlanti universe. I mean, that's gone because yeah, it is. It's over. It's over. So that universe and the Zack Snyder universe are completely washed out. I mean, enjoy for what it is, and let we'll just have to see what they're going to come up with. Yeah, it is true. But we did get like one little uh, like after credit scene, which was pretty funny with uh, Arthur Curry and Barry, and Barry's just telling him all the difference uh, and stuff that he saw in these multiverses, where it was a different version of. Uh, Batman and Superman and right. stuff like that. And then he goes, yeah, but Aquaman was always you. It was <laughs> always you, Arthur. It always looked like you. And then he just falls out, passed out drunk in a puddle. Yeah. He goes, come on, I, Arthur, we got to go home. He goes, I, I am home, Barry. <laughs> I, I, I thought that was a stupid fucking scene. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> it was it's a just, throwaway scene is what they did. It was just a dumb scene where I wish... I wish that that scene, if James Gunn was sort of would have been a smarter man, say, hey, we're going to refilm that scene <laughs> where Barry all of a sudden sees glimpses of what's to come. And mm. then James Gunn could have just said, listen, I don't care if we just do it as CG, but yeah. we could show Superman that's not Henry Cavill. We could show, you know, Blue Beetle. We could show... Yeah. Uh, some of these other things that he already announced. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, you know, because movies are, you know, they, uh, they edit movies up until like the last minute that it's almost, you know, released. That is true. So they could have done something where they're like, okay, so, you know, that could have been, and then you could have said, okay, it's true. This movie does make a transition from that universe to the next one. Mm -hmm. But no, this was just, you know, Jason Momoa getting drunk. And <laughs> passing out, and I was just like, that was terrible. I mean, it's always great to see Jason Momoa as uh, Aquaman, but that was just terrible, man. It, just, it was. It was horrible. By the way, his wine is called Dirt Dirtbag Wine. Yep. <laughs> so, because I was looking it up to see if I could get I can't find it anywhere. Oh, man. Yeah. I remember when Bren brought that. Uh, I, I'm gonna, I have to say what it was about, like six years ago. That we mm. uh, we all got together and he brought it too, like a get together, and we all we all had a little bit of it. Yeah. It was pretty good. It wasn't bad. All righty, all right. Well, that that was our coverage of the Flash. So, uh, yeah, if you guys have any thoughts of your own that you want to put in for the Flash, we didn't get anything, but uh, that's where we get into the whole point of the podcast of where you could send your feedback. So, uh, with that, I did put an image. For you guys to uh, on Facebook, so facebook.com is so forward slash panels to pixels, and literally there was an image, and I said put your uh, comments in the comment section down below. You didn't really do so, but uh, it's still there if you ever want to, and you could also email us at panels to pixels one at gmail.com, and that could be a texted out you know email. You could just type it all out, send it our way. We could read it off the next time we're on. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be at the time of the podcast. Or you could record yourself and send it as an attachment. And you could just send that to panels2pixels1 at gmail.com. That's panels2 is spelled out to pixels and the number one at gmail.com. We could be found on Amazon. Well, Instagram. Sorry, Amazon. <laughs> you could be, I was going to say, you could be found in Amazon. <laughs> well, Amazon Music. Amazon Music for podcasts. Okay, that's yes, true. You can. That's true. So uh, we can be found on Instagram uh, at panels two pixels podcast, all one wording uh, spelled out exactly as it is at panels two pixels podcast. Uh, Twitter is at panels two pixels, and that's panels the number two and then pixels. But uh, yeah, if you guys want to send any feedback, that would be great. Just tell us your thoughts about what you thought of the Flash twenty twenty three. Or any of the other stuff that we're covering right now on Panels to Pixels podcast, like Secret Invasion that we're currently covering. Uh, we have another four episodes to be uh, doing this week, uh, coming up until the uh, series is over for the season. Hopefully it comes back again. We'll find out. But <laughs> uh, this is where, uh, where, well, where can listeners hear you, Rob? Uh, you can listen to me on Fantasy Picks Movie Edition, which is part of your uh, network, uh, uh, the Pirate Core Entertainment. Yep. And our next one, um, 
I believe we just did the, you know, we just did the top five Harrison Ford movies. Yes. Uh, draft, which of course, um, you were part of, and that should be coming out soon. So I'm not sure when this, this will be coming out, but it either comes out before this or after this. So look out yeah. for that. Yeah. It depends on when I'm finished editing, probably during the week, but, uh, we'll see when it comes out. Um, Obviously, you could hear me here on a Panels to Pixels podcast, as always. You can. Uh, Steve <laughs> Steve can't uh, could make it this one on this particular episode, but he will be on uh, Secret Invasion when we cover that. So uh, you could listen to the first episode and the second episode. Now, uh, we have another four more to go. Uh, after that, we will find out because of what comes out, or if not, we will come up with a subject. Uh, you could also hear me on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, where uh, I had just released The Thing 2011. Uh, by the time this comes out, most likely I'll already have edited and put out for Big Trouble in Love China, which is a review that uh, my friend Jamie Dimmick and uh, Jerry Gomez have covered. And uh, you could still send out feedback there. All you have to do is send that to Adrenaline Cinema Podcast at gmail.com. But, uh, yeah, that particular podcast, all we do is action, adventure, fantasy, suspense, thriller films, basically anything that gets your adrenaline going. So uh, uh, you can find me there. So uh, that's it for now, everybody. I just want to thank you all for listening. Same podcast, different panel, different pixel. And this was Panels to Pixels, and we'll see you in the next panel. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.